I would like to thank EVBase for sending me this item today. I have heard about a few different kinds of rear seat displays. Now I get to see one and test it out. When you select this item for purchase, you will be asked if you have an older 2017 to 2018 car or a newer post 2019 car. This makes a difference since the data connector has changed. Inside the box is a 2017 to 2018 cable adapter that I will need for my 2018 Model 3. This is known as a 20 pin data cable and I'll talk more about it in a little bit. Next we have the box for the display itself. After removing the plastic wrapping, I'll get a better look at the box. As you can see, it says a Model 3 and Y air conditioner control and multimedia system. On the side, it lists some of the specs. It has a 7-inch display. It includes 2 gigabytes RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage, and it supports CarPlay. On the back, it shows all the features that the unit can control. Air conditioner, rear seat heating, seat belt reminder, music, video, mobile internet if connected by Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, and it runs the Android operating system. And it has a touch screen. The box cover is pulled up to remove, and underneath is a foam pad and some paperwork. First is the warranty card, and next is the user manual, and it shows all of the icons and their meanings, and also how to use the different sections of the system. Inside this white box on the side, we have another cable. This one is the 26-pin data cable for 2019 and newer Model 3 and Y vehicles. Like the first one, this has a nicely wrapped cable, and I'll compare the two cables after the next section. In the larger white box, we have the display unit itself. It has a white protective plastic on the screen, so it doesn't get damaged during the installation. This housing is designed to be a direct replacement for the existing rear console vent housing, and you'll see how good it matches during the installation. On the bottom, we have three USB outlets. The left one is USB-A for data and power, the middle is USB-C for power, and the right is USB-A for power. On the rear bottom, we have two metal clips for holding it into place. And on the back, we have foam insulation for the HVAC ducting. On the top, there's a diagram showing the connectors that are being used. There are two cables here. The first one is for USB, and the second one is for the host interface. One thing that's a little disappointing is that the fan vents are not movable as they are in the OEM version. So I guess there had to be some compromise to fit all of this into the original space. Overall, it has a nice solid build and the plastic feels good to the touch and with a similar look to the existing interior plastic that Tesla uses. Here are the two cables, the 20 pin and the 26 pin. As I mentioned, the 20 pin is for the older 2017 to 2018 cars and the 26 pin for 2019 and newer cars. I'll take off the twist tie holding the cable for shipping. Stretching it out, you can see the full length and it's more than enough for the installation. At one end are the two white connectors. The male connector will attach to the connector in the car and the female connector will then attach to the wire harness plug in the car. So this adapter will fit in between the two connectors in the car, basically splicing it into the system. The other end of the cable has two plugs. The larger one is called the 8-pin host interface and will attach to the new display unit. The other 2-pin plug is not currently used and does not need to be plugged in for installation of the unit. If you recall my video a few weeks ago on retrofitting a USB-C in the rear of the console, I showed an adapter cable that will be needed for pre-refresh Model 3 and Y without the USB-C ports. This will allow the old cable harness from the car to connect to the new USB connector on the housing. This is not included with the kit and you'll need to purchase it separately. The only tool you need for this project is a plastic pry bar, also known as a trim removal tool. And now for the installation. I recommend moving the front seats to the most forward position to make it easier to work on the rear console area. I'll do the same for the passenger side. 
remove any floor mats you may have in the back seat area. The lower part of the rear console area is what we have here. I want to remove the trim piece to get access to the wiring behind it. I found the easiest way is taking the plastic pry bar and going along the side edge of the plastic piece. Once you get a good grip, pull on it and it will unsnap the five connectors on the panel. You can then place it aside. These are the two connectors that need to be separated. Using the plastic pry bar, press down on the connector tab and then pull it away from the one that is mounted to the frame. Now get the adapter cable out and ready. Insert the car's data cable mail connector, which is shown on the left, into the female end of the adapter cable shown on the right. These plugs only fit one way, so if they don't connect, just flip one of them over and try again. Now take the adapter cable and insert the male end, shown on the left, into the female end that is fixed to the frame, which is on the right. Make sure both of the connections are tight. Now for the upper rear console. Just get a good grip on the vent assembly then pull straight up and it will unsnap from the clips. Be careful since there is a cable attached to the housing. The cable is on the bottom of the unit. Just pull up on the retention clip and the cable can then be released to disconnect. You can then place this piece aside, you will not need it anymore, but I would still keep it just in case. Now for a little fishing. Take the end of the adapter cable that we installed earlier. Put it into the lower opening and then keep pushing it up. Eventually, you will see the end of the cable in the gap between the HVAC vent and the edge of the console. Pull it out and then keep feeding the cable into the opening and pull more out from the top. you will eventually have enough cable to work with. By the way, this is the USB-C adapter cable I was talking about during the unboxing. This needs to be added at the end of the car's original USB cable, which will allow you to use the new display's USB ports. Take the 8-pin host interface connectors, which are the smaller ones, one from the adapter and also one from the display, and attach them together. Make sure to line up the release tab on the left connector with the corresponding lock on the right connector. Then they will snap in. Next, grab the USB cables, the one on the left from the adapter and the one on the right from the display. There is a dog leg on the connectors so that they will fit together in only one direction. Now connect them. With all of the excess cable, tuck them into the gap between the vent duct and the edge of the console. There should be plenty of room in there. Make sure none of the cables are blocking the vent opening. Then place the cover over the opening and center it. Press down to snap in the clips.
Here is a close up look of the newly installed vent assembly and display. It blends in well with the existing plastic and looks very OEM like. With the installation done, I can pull off the protective plastic from the display. Back at the base of the rear console, I need to stuff as much of the cable into the lower opening as possible. Once I get in as much as I can, I will place the trim piece back on. Then press in to snap the five clips into position. Note that the cable you see on the left hand side is from a different project that uses an OBD2 connector. And this concludes part one covering the unboxing and installation. Part two is coming soon and I will discuss how to use the software and my conclusion. If you're interested, see the link in the video description. Also note that for pre-refresh Model 3 or Y without the USB-C, you need an additional USB adapter to work with this kit. Don't forget to use code RANGER for 10% or more off of this product. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.